tells you. So with a doorbell, uh, there's lots of remote doorbells. This one's plugged into the wall, but there's lots of battery-operated ones, and there are some children's ones that you can get. Uh, you can go to dollar stores, and sometimes they have really cheap ones that have a, a wire attached, but they're great for testing. Okay, so when you ring a doorbell, again, there's a lot of variables. If the dog responds, it might show you that it's interested in the doorbell, but it also might mean that it's lived in a house and it knows visitors are coming. However, one reason I do this sound is if the dog starts alarm barking, running around, and acting really upset, then I have an indication that that dog is, you know, going to have a problem with visitors and things. And it's, we don't want a problem with excessive barking at the door for a hearing dog. If it wagged its tail, it was happy barking, that's fine with me, but not if it shows a strong negative response. Hey, let's get up. Get up and play. Let's get up and play, huh? Good girl. You're silly, huh? What was that? What was that? What was that? You're still looking around. So, with that response, I can't really tell if she's been a house pet or she's just curious about the sound. Now that she's looking around, I'm sort of thinking house pet. But I can't make that decision. But again, at least I have a dog that's not afraid of the doorbell. So it's an interesting test. Would you consider her a minimal, a minimal um, response on all tests? I would say minimal, but because there's so many levels beyond minimal, which are like zero potential, uh, zero potential, ultra negative potential, uh, you know, terrified of sounds, phobia, but you know, zero potential. So. Um, her interest shows that she has something to build on. Okay. So if I take treats, ring the timer, walk backwards, wiggle everything, act excited, I can build that orienting response. 